How do you know when a YouTube ad is working? It's all in the data. How do you know which ads to test or actually what does the optimization process look like when you're testing ads? That and more coming your way on this YouTube ad video for today. Let's dive right in. starting out with YouTube ads or you're well versed and you're already testing out different creative you want to know the right way to actually optimize these creatives or at least campaigns based on what creatives are performing the best for you and also how to structure your campaigns the right way so that way your, your budget is being allocated say more efficiently and more equally across the board so today's video we're gonna give you some insight into you know we've managed over 10 million dollars in ad spend and have tested thousands of creative across multiple niches and multiple accounts so let's dive right in guys. One of the biggest things is your campaign structure, but before you define how you're gonna structure your campaigns, really understand your budget, really understand how many creatives you have. All these are important questions to determine how it is that you're gonna set up your campaign structure. There's different methodologies about this. Recently, we've started an account where our client has, let's say five different ads for different offers. There's two offers. So he has five different variations. So for this particular client, they're already converting well from other traffic sources with these ads they've already been proven to work on specific traffic sources like Facebook so one way that we've done it with these particular client is uh, for example he's already he wants to spend over a thousand dollars a day they want to spend 25k a day very soon we start out at a thousand dollars a day they had five creatives per offer so it was two offers two different landing pages and everything so they have five different ads and the way that we set this up is you know we'll launch multiple campaigns so typically Typically, you can go about this in, in one or two ways, depending on how, let's say, like I said, the budget that you have and the creative. For this client, like we can get a little bit more creative and we could actually do a little bit more testing within at the beginning and to get a little bit, uh, get data back faster. So we actually went with $50 campaigns. So we created 20 campaigns at $50 per day per campaign. So each each offer had 10 campaigns, for example. They were, you know, specific audience targeting, but today's, for today's video, we're just gonna focus on the creative piece. So they had, they had five ads. So those five ads were being tested against 10 different audiences. Once we start seeing the data come in, you know, we obviously let a few days to go by. We've already started seeing purchases, but there are certain ads that weren't getting a lot of ad spend there. So, you know, you want to take a note of that. So that way you could actually just relaunch with some particular, with those particular ads. Now I get it. Sometimes as media buyers, you know, it, it can get a little messy in terms of the testing, but that's why in previous videos we've shared with you the uh, having a creative queue. So that where you're staying on top of which creative you're already testing, uh, which ones has generated performed well and uh, which ones has not. So that way you can just keep a, a really tight grip on that. But yeah, that's one way that we've done it. Like I said, it's, you know, if you have five creatives, we'll, we'll try out the five creatives. I know there are times where we've said, hey, you know, we can do, you wanna do two to four. You know, if you wanna put the five into one campaign, you can do so and just let the hour, you know, allocate that budget that you have for each creative. We've already seen success on some of the campaigns. It's already getting purchased is at a KPI, some of them are not. Some of them have super high cost per purchase and some are getting are getting the results that we want. So once you do that, after you define your target CPA that you want, or your break even CPA, you wanna start turning off those ads. And this is now the piece of, of optimizing your campaigns. You know, you wanna determine at this point, okay, am I getting good cost per lead, right? Are, are my CPCs too high for my ideal metrics? And again, you know, that's where you need to do kind of your media buying math and you wanna take your, you know, your conversion rate and you want to divide it by you know your target CPA and understand what it is that you need to get in terms of a cost per click in order for this to work because if you're getting five dollar cost per click no matter what you do that ad is probably not gonna you know be scalable for you even if maybe you get one purchase here and there but if you have one particular particular campaign where you're already hitting the let's say dollar fifty if that's the cost per click ideal metric then that's the one where you want to kind of allocate a little bit more of the budget and maybe even relaunch that particular ad with more audiences right and more campaigns because at the end of the day with creative testing it's really a win or is it a miss right it's, it's either amazing or it's 
totally crap. So you need to make those decisions based on the campaigns and the data that you're seeing on the ad level. So very important. When you optimize, go to the ad level, take a look at your date range and look at your CPCs, look at your click through rates. And then from there, you know, you want to see which ones are driving your ROI, which ones are driving your performance, if that's what you're basing it off of. If you're basing it off of lead costs entirely, then obviously you, you already have a metric. You already know what you need to have in order for you to meet that specific KPI. Then you just, you know, you pause accordingly. But like I said, from a campaign structure standpoint, there's many ways you can go about it. I gave you one where you just, you know, if you have 10 creative, you know, you bulk them in there. You know, if you have 10, you don't want to bulk all 10 into one campaign. You want to kind of like separate them out. They usually do up from two, two to four. But again, we did five this time. We just kind of, it's one extra ad. I just, you know, put added it in there. But typically an ideal scenario would be for you to create uh, other environments, right? Where let's say if you're launching, um, you can launch one campaign, one audience targeting, and maybe you want to do like head to head testing and you can just do, you know, two creative at a time, right? So you can do that. And you know, you test those two creatives against multiple audiences, right? So that'll be like multiple campaigns on those two creatives. You can really get some data back, you know, at maybe like one week's data and see, all right, out of these two creatives, you know, we tested them both against the same audiences, let's say 30, 40 audiences. And from there, you'll be able to see, all right, well, this creative had higher ROAS, right? Than this one or, and, and vice versa. So those definitely want to, let's say, label them as your winning creative that you can continuously test against new audience. And those ones that are the losers, right? Where you're just getting super high cost, you know, very low click through rate, minimal results. Those are the ones that you kind of want to just put in, in the back there, right? Or label that as, as non-performers. And that's how you can kind of try to differentiate, right? Specifically, like I said, if you have different hooks, right? So you, a lot of you might have five ads, but then each ad is a different hook. That's one way that you can go about it is, you know, setting up your campaigns that way and testing the same video ads with the same audiences. And then you just from, from there, after you're getting seven to 10 day data, then you'll be able to determine, okay, this hook one and hook two are the ones that are actually moving the needle in terms of ROAS figures, right? In terms of click to rate. So that's one way to go about it. Uh Hey guys, before we move on, I wanted to talk about something very special very quickly. If you are interested in running or are already running YouTube ads, this is for you. I wanted to introduce you to a few people that are killing it with YouTube ads. Mike made over a million and a half dollars with e-commerce YouTube ads. Bastian did over $300,000 for a client at a 10X ROAS. Boyd's making five grand a day with his course. Kale made a client $40,000 from just $8,000 in ad spend. Lloyd made a client $33,000 from $12,000 in ad spend. Do you know what the one thing they have in common? They're all part of my expert YouTube ads training program. We have the most technical YouTube ads course in the market with live weekly calls, a Facebook group where you can ask any question you want about YouTube ads and more. And some of the best students spending thousands or even $10,000 a day on YouTube advertising. So there's a link below in the description to go book a demo call. Go and book a call to get a preview of the course and see if it's a fit for you and if it can help you get your YouTube ads to $5,000 a day or more. Now let's get back to the rest of this video. I recently have tested out another methodology here, a testing methodology in terms of ad creatives, which is the $5 method, right? So the $5 method is very similar to a lot of maybe media buyers are doing on Facebook, but it's taking, you know, creating $5 campaigns where you're, you're basically, it'll be one campaign inside that campaign is one audience and one ad in particular. And then, you know, you obviously you label your ads accordingly and your naming convention. That's a very important piece of, of this is you have your naming convention properly where you have your ad, right? The campaign type, conversion type. And essentially the way you want to do it is setting up a whole bunch of campaigns. So this is where you can actually actually allocate your budget, obviously. And it's a lot easier to, to, to optimize, which I'll get to in a second. Back to the $5 campaign structure and method, you know, you have to launch multiple campaigns. Let's say you have the 10 video ads and you know, you wanna obviously have some good testing done with each video. So what we'd recommend is, you know, you, you launch at least 20 or 30 audiences per video. Each of them would be a campaign that you'll set at $5 a day. Whether you wanna set at max conversions, target CPA, that all depends on where you're at, what stage, you know, your account is at, if you already have some conversion data, then go with the target CPA. But I'm just giving you kind of the campaign structure overview of the $5 methodology here. So each ad, maybe 20, 30 audiences, boom. So that's, you know, you can just count them up 20 times the 10, right? Again, that's an example. We use the four, that's 200 campaigns essentially that you'd launch at $5 a day each. So that's about $1,000 a day. So that's essentially, you know, one way that you can go about that. If you want to do less, you can do less, you know, just test 10 audiences per, per Ad. Those will be 10 different campaigns and you'll have more control. From that point on, you know that once you go
go in, inside your, your dashboard. You're not, you don't have to go on the ad level anymore because you know for a fact that each campaign just has one ad. So that's the little shortcut there for you to just go on the, on the campaign level and just optimize accordingly, right? Well, what's the, the benefit from doing this uh, type of test? This type of test is essentially gonna let you know which ads are performing well, you know, right away, which ads are not essentially, you know, which ones are winners. So, and you can actually just be really aggressive on pausing the, the ones that are not, right? If you have high CPCs, high click to raise after two or three day period, just kill those. And if you have ones that are, are giving you the purchases or giving you the leads or book calls, then you just increase the budget on those. And the good thing is that you, on those, you could actually scale a little bit more aggressive instead of going from $5 to let's say $10, you can go to $5 to $25 or even $50. And the algo will actually do its thing and, and just, you know, continue with showing the ad to, to the people that are more likely to convert in that specific audience ad combination. That is essentially some ways that you can go about your creative testing. I know the more standard ways is like, if you have a budget of $300 a day, $500 a day, then you wanna create maybe like six campaigns at $50 a day. So those, that's another uh, way that you you can do so. Um, and maybe, if you, you know, if you don't have that many creative, if you, if you only have like four creatives to test, then you can do it that way, right? Have a $50 campaign, $50 a day campaign with those four ads in there. And then, you know, you measure results after two or three days, see how, how things are, are going there. You may have some ads that are, haven't even spent the entire budget. Like I said, if you have those like that, then a recommendation would be try re just launching those that haven't had enough spend and exclude the other ones, right? And you can just keep a track of those. Just keep track of those, those other ads that, that maybe the algorithm is not giving enough love to. And then from there, you just, you'll be able to determine, okay, well, the ads already spent, you know, it already got over a thousand impressions. You know, that's one another little rule that I go by is like, if they already have over a thousand impressions, obviously, the target CPA, it's over 1.5 times your target CPA or target per cost of purchase, then you turn it off, right? Because it's not performing well. But if you have the other ones that are, then you simply continue to optimize and allocate budget towards those campaigns that have those winning ads. Yeah, I mean, to finish it off, you know, the way to optimize video creative, it's not as complicated as it seems, guys. It's really just understanding your metrics, understanding your numbers, seeing which one's going to be your hero ad. Once you have your hero ad, then you're going to want to test that across multiple audiences. We've had an e-commerce client where one particular ad has been carrying the account for the past six months, uh, even though click-through rate has been trending down, because that does happen. You will get ad fatigue, and we've mentioned that many times. In media buying that does exist, but you know, maximize, it. juice it as much as possible. If you're, if it's that's already working across multiple audiences, keep doing that. Keep launching in a horizontal way where you're launching new campaigns, that same winning ad, and just measure the results and see see what you get from there. And then from there, you just kind of want to have more ads in the testing queue. Keep adding more of the ads and, and just just relaunch campaigns that way. And then you can get creative with it. Like I said, you can just do the two ads per campaign uh, approach. You can do, if you have the four or five, try all of them at the beginning. And then from there, you just kind of isolate the, the different testing environments, you know, uh, create different isolated environments. One campaign, one audience, one particular ad, maybe lower spend there. Um, or you can do the one campaign, one audience setting, and two to four ads. I hope this helps. Uh, like I said, it's it's important to, to really come up with good creative as that's gonna give you the ammo for you to scale your accounts. You know, if you're a new media buyer or even an experienced one, you know, uh, you wanna spend every bit of free time that you have uh, doing some competitive creative analysis. So we do a lot of creative reports. I know we may have a video here. Inside our course, our student course for YouTube ads, there is a, a specific section where we talk about how to create creative reports based on pivot tables. Uh, Google Ads does have its own option there, but with the pivot tables, it, it's a little bit uh, better to see. It's a little bit easier to, to read the data. So uh, it's a high return activity. It'll help you generate better ads because if you're able to pinpoint, okay, which hook, which ad and, and which hook is the one that's actually moving the needle here, then you can just create more versions of that, maybe in a different setting. There's a lot of things that you can do with, with that creative analysis. Okay. But that's pretty much it. I mean, as you know, the, that's the basic process of media buying, right? You, you want to take creative ads, test with different audiences, you know, based on your target research, based on what's already working for you, based on data, and you want to find as many winning combinations as possible, right? That are giving you the best cost and best uh, ROAS. So that's pretty much it, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to leave your comment below and we can actually uh, take a look and go from there. But we hope you enjoyed this video today and you actually got some value from it in terms of the creative testing and the optimization piece of it. Again, each optimization is gonna be different based on your numbers. Know your numbers. That's one of the biggest things that I can tell you. But from a creative standpoint, continue testing. Test, test, test. That's what we gotta do. Find that winning ad audience combination and just replicate that more and more. That's what media buying is all about, guys. So thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next video.